Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Wang. My lab studies the 3D genome by inventing new image-based spatial omics techniques. We know our two meter long genome is spatially organized in the cell nucleus in a hierarchical fashion and all these different structures at different length scales, they are fundamental to uh, genome functions as they control uh, a wide range of genomic functions from gene expression regulation to the replication of the genome. And they also show intriguing dynamics in different biological processes from development to aging to diseases. However, there are still many burning and often intractable questions in this field, largely due to technical limitations. And my whole research program started from this uh, very simple question that people has not been able to answer for decades. That is, what is the 3D folding path of chromatin at lens scales above the nucleosomes? To answer this question, four years ago, we invented a new technique called chromatin tracing. So it's a technique that's based on highly multiplex DNA imaging to sequentially pinpoint numerous genomic loci in 3D along a single chromosome and link them to super resolve the 3D chromatin folding organization. So this technique really opened up this field called image-based spatial uh, genomics and uh, in the past several years, there are many labs applying this technique to different lens scales and to different model organisms, including several more works from uh, us. Uh, and in a related development, we invented this uh, technique called the MERFISH, uh, which enables multiplex imaging of hundreds to thousands of distinct RNA species in single cells at the single molecule level. So it's like uh, single cell RNA sequencing, except that you also retain all the molecular position information inside of a cell and the cellular position information inside of a tissue. It's really a new type of high dimensional omic data. And recently, we combined our highly multiplexed DNA, RNA, and also protein imaging together uh, into a single integrative platform called MENA. And we applied it to uh, mammalian tissue section now. So uh, with this technique, we now can image in a complex native tissue environment, the multifaceted and multi-skill nucleomic organization associated with gene expression in a cell type specific manner. So uh, at last, we now have one technique to image them all and in the darkness of the microscope room, bind them. And we do this because we have several previously intractable questions. For example, there is this uh, important gene called SCD2 that's critical for fetal liver development, and we know it's expressed in fetal liver hepatocytes, which is one of the cell types. Uh, however, the cis regulatory region folding was previously unknown. Particularly, there are several enhancers marked in orange here, and which one or one of them interact with the SCD2 promoter in fetal liver hepatocyte was unknown. And with our technique, we can compare the chromatin folding organization of this region in hepatocyte versus in non hepatocytes and we can identify, okay, this enhancer actually interact with the SCD2 promoter in fetal liver hepatocytes. So we can identify cell type specific promoter enhancer interaction in a complex tissue now. And at the larger lens scale, we also wonder what's the chromatin folding scheme. Particularly, there is this organization called AB compartmentalization. So this essentially is open versus closed chromatin. You know, at the large scale, the chromatin is sorted into the open and closed chromatin compartment, and they are related with gene uh, activity. Um, and with our technique, we can profile this open versus closed chromatin profile along uh, the whole chromosome in different cell types, and we see they indeed differ. And this the changes in the large scale chromatin folding are also correlated with gene expression changes. And furthermore, we also wonder how does the how how are the different nucleomic architectures correlated with each other? And particularly in this analysis, we are analyzing the probability of different genomic regions. Uh, uh, to be associated with nucleolus or nuclear laminar. Uh, and we plot these probabilities against the compartment score, the AB compartmentalization score of these genomic regions. And we find this anticipated negative correlation. However, what's surprising, what's new here is that the exact relationship between these nucleomic architectures actually systematically differ between different cell types. So, um, and even between closely related, very similar cell types. So this indicates that the laminar association, nucleolus association, and the AB compartment, they do not solely determine each other. They actually may offer orthogonal control to genomic functions. So these are just some examples of what we can derive from the molecular positions inside of a cell, right? So what about the cellular positions inside of a tissue? In an unpublished work, we're now analyzing 
uh, how are the fit oliver cell types arranged in space. And on a direct look, it seems that these are morphologically similar cells and the different cell types seem to be like uh, well mixed and kind of random. But upon more careful statistical analysis, we find the particular cell types are enriched in a pairing neighborhood relationship. And some of the pairs were previously known. For example, um, Irishal Blast actually can circle on a macrophage to form this erythroblastic island structure. Some are less well known, for example, hepatocytes seem to be paired with pro erythroblasts And we indeed see that in our raw images showing in cyan, hepatocytes, and uh, orange pro erythroblasts here. We further wonder what's the molecular interaction uh, underlying this arrangement. And from our RNA profiles, we found that, okay, KIT and KIT ligand seem to be enriched in these cell pairs, and they may be underlying this uh, spatial arrangement of the cells. So in sum, we have now this intuitive technique that offers multimodal um, spatial omic information that's uh, an unprecedented capacity. And um, with this capacity, we're further investigating the 3D genome, how it impacts cellular function and states in development, aging, and diseases. We're building a regular term of the 3D genome, doing genetic screens of the factors that control 3D genome. We're also further developing new techniques in this field. We offer very comprehensive training from genome biology, cell biology, biophysics, to computation and instrumentation. We actually build our own uh, highly multiplex and automated microscope and uh, fluidics system. We have a very supportive lab environment, a special thanks to Miao and Yanfang here, who offer the most of the data I'm showing today. And thanks to our collaborators, Sam Sherman and Xinhua on the field of labor work. And thank you all. We need to expand our lab and we welcome new Gutation students. Thanks.